Good morning, everyone. You're watching Breakfast Television here on a City. Hearing the words, you have cancer, can be life-changing. Charlotte Kessler knows this very well. She is a brain cancer survivor. Leading up to World Cancer Day on February 4th, the Canadian Partnership Against Cancer is releasing a report about the cancer patient experience. Charlotte has been a patient advisor on this report and is here to tell us what the report has uncovered. Good morning to you, Charlotte. Good morning, Leah. This is a pretty remarkable report. It, it really reflects the voices of over 30,000 cancer survivors. So they've really looked at a lot of people. But this is something you know intimately. Tell us a little bit about your experience following your own cancer treatment. Uh, following my cancer treatment, after so my cancer treatment included brain surgery, six weeks of radiation, and about two years of chemotherapy. Um, so you'd think that would have been the hardest part. Absolutely. But it was actually the post-treatment that for me was the hardest. Um, during treatment, I was so focused on getting through each day, staying healthy, staying strong. Anything that I missed or couldn't do made sense because I was on treatment. Um, and so all that reality just kind of blended together and it became just so focused on the day, getting through the day. Then post-treatment, um, you're kind of just in limbo, uh, especially for myself. My cancer isn't a type that goes away. My tumor is not completely gone. Right. So like so many, I mean, I had physical challenges that still remained uh, similar to eight and 10 of the respondents in the survey. Um, mm. I had uh, emotional uh, impacts. I mean, the reality of living with cancer now and having been through so much and my life still being so in limbo and so changed um, as a result of a lot of the physical treatments. Um, I was, you know, it was impacting my family, uh, what I could do with them and how much I was able to give. Um, it was impacted me emotionally in the fact that I wasn't able to go back to work so I had to grieve a career that I had taken such pride in and had been such a big part of me for so long. Um, and just not being able to do the things I could do was, right. was really troubling. And it sounds like your experience is very much what was reflected in this report in the sense that they were really good, were really good at treating the cancer itself, but not so much the person that content now lives with cancer for much longer. Correct. And um, I mean, I had moments definitely where I got to experience some of the good parts of the healthcare system here in Alberta. Um, I did have a team for a period of time that really did treat me as a person, help me get through some tough parts through the treatment itself. But when I switched into that post-treatment and became more of a um, checkup kind of appointment situation, uh, I, I lost a lot of that. And so I, you know, I'd ask for help, I would, but I didn't know what I needed. Right. And in the, all honesty, probably they didn't either. Mm -hmm. um, so when I would ask for help but couldn't quite explain what, they didn't know what to do. So it kind of just, oh, it's normal, you'll get used to it. It's, right. It's just what to expect, and you just have to adapt. And it took about a year for me to have fun, like of saying, like, no, I need a consistent team. I need people that are going to care for me. I need, I need help. Um, and I had to really be proactive in that. To now, I'm back to having a healthcare, an oncologist that I do feel works with me, and she's gotten me to a psychologist and worked with me with some of those things. I've gotten involved with the CPAC and this report and uh, the Calgary Cancer Center working with that on that patient advisory board and those things have all helped me kind of find a purpose. A purpose, yeah. yeah, moving forward. And that really is reflected in a lot of the statistics here. Seven in ten report having emotional challenges after treatment ends, worry about the cancer returning, depression, changes in sexual intimacy, their biggest concerns. And that was exactly what you experienced. Exactly. Um, and even the day-to-day, -day, I mean, four in ten experienced day-to-day -day challenges after the fact. And that was very real for me. Um, all of a sudden, my days were completely different. Instead of having my days filled with getting through treatment, now it was, okay, well, I can't work, but, you know, I don't quite have the energy to do a lot. Um, and I also don't have the capability, just with the brain tumor, some of the deficits that it has left me with make it hard for me to really get out there and, and be active in, in the community. So I've had to find other ways to do that. And a lot of that is um, spending time with my husband and my daughter and I'm really trying to be the best mom I can be. Absolutely. Here you are with your daughter, and this is just right after, I believe it was your last radiation, was it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Wow. She what a journey definitely. you've been on. Charlotte, thank you so much for sharing your experience with us and enlightening us with this report. I appreciate it. Wonderful.